Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues Journal Club. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and today I will be discussing about an engaging case report which basically highlights the development in the fertility care where genetic counseling and targeted prenatal diagnostic testing can help a Roberts, Robertsonian translocation carriers give birth to a normal baby. Now the study that I'm discussing today is published in the Fertility Science and Research Journal which is in turn published by Scientific Scholar. Now talking to us in detail about the case report that is uh, Robertsonian translocation or the birth of a Down syndrome baby in case of silent carriers, we have with us today one of the lead authors of the study, Dr. Indra Mohan Singh Sandhu from the Department of Genetics, Sri Guru Ramdas Institute of Medical Sciences and Research, Amritsar, India. So welcome to Medical Dialogue, sir. It's really a pleasure to be interviewing you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Great. Uh, now, sir, now we're talking about your study. If you could just give us a brief on, if you could tell our audience, what is a Robertsonian translocation and what is its clinical significance? If you could just highlight on that. Okay. Uh, let's see, Dr. Nanta, there can be uh, different mutations uh, which can be present in the human chromosomes, um, including uh, the, there can be some type of deletions or duplications or translocations. So, uh, simply translocations mean a uh, segment of one chromosome shifted to the another uh, chromosome. But, but when the chromosome, uh, the specific chromosome number 13, 14, 15 or uh, chromosome 21 and 22, that means the acrocentric chromosomes are involved uh, for these translocations. We call them the Robertsonian translocations. Because during these translocations, uh, the Q arms of two chromosomes get attached with each other and make the Robertsonian translocation. Uh, in that person and uh, we call such persons as uh, Robertsonian translocation carriers or the balanced translocation carriers. Uh, and, and if we, uh, you say about the uh, clinical implications of Robertsonian translocations, uh, as such those individuals do not, sh uh, do not have any particular kind of disorder or genetic disease. Uh, but for such patients, the biggest implication is about the fertility. That means they can be infertile uh, as these mutations can cause unbalanced uh, translocations or unbalanced trans, uh, the genetic material in the fetus. That, uh, due to this, uh, they, they may face different uh, type of abnormalities or uh, infertility issues such as reoccurrent pregnancy losses or intrauterine fetal demise or infertility in general. So this is the biggest implications. And uh, moreover, if the uh, translocation happened between chromosome 21 and any other acro uh, acrocentric chromosome, the biggest risk uh, for such individuals is to give birth to a Down syndrome children. Okay, uh, definitely. I think uh, now coming to the uh, as aspect of where you just mentioned that such patients can give birth to Down syndrome. So if you can enlighten on uh, the different types of chromosomal abnormalities, especially uh, about Down syndrome. Uh, yes, just see, uh, there can be different type of chromosomal aberrations and uh, mutations which can be present uh, in, a, in, in an individual. Uh, like uh, mainly we divide those aberrations into numerical and structural abnormalities. Uh, for the numerical abnormalities, the trisomies are the major uh, issue like uh, we can have a trisomy 13 we call it Patau syndrome tr uh, trisomy 18 the Edward syndrome and the trisomy 21 we call it the down syndrome uh, among these uh, syndromes down syndrome is the commonest one uh, because this is the this is the syndrome uh, which is uh, which is which can be present in uh, in a birth uh, in a baby after after birth this because this is a uh, compatible with the life um, other syndromes like Patau syndrome and the Edward syndrome, the fetus mostly do not compatible with life and uh, there can be miscarriages or the uh, fetal uh, intrauterine fetal demise can happen due to other syndromes. And uh, in the Down syndrome, uh, the major reason is uh, such kind of people have or such fetus have one extra chromosome 21. And due to this, they, they have typical uh, facial features uh, like the mongoloid features. Uh, including the flat nasal, bri uh, nasal bridges there. Uh, they can have epicanthal folds, uh, upper thin uh, lip and many other abnormalities. Uh, those people uh, mostly have some physical uh, delays 
in in normal growth and also can have disability intellectual and uh, disabilities as this is a genetic disorder so there is no cure for this dis disorder and such patients can live a, a normal life uh, or sort of normal life by uh, providing them with some physical uh, therapies or uh, occupational therapies or they also need uh, speech and uh, language therapies uh, to live a normal life yes uh, definitely uh, that's that's actually much needed for such patients now uh, coming to uh, talk about your uh, aspect your genetic uh, aspect of these uh, this report that we just talking about so what role does genetic counseling play in uh, handling such congenital abnormalities and what is your advice for expecting parents in such cases uh, see nowadays uh, the genetic testing is getting uh, available easily in india uh, so due to this the uh, the importance of genetic counseling is also increasing day by day uh, because there are uh, thousands of genetic disorders and uh, every disorder have a typical genetic testing for uh, that particular disorder and and a genetic counselor or a medical geneticist can help uh, the for uh, fixing this targeted genetic testing uh, due to this i, I feel uh, before going for a genetic testing a pre test genetic counseling sessions are very important uh, so that uh, uh, the patients get a typical test which is uh, actually required for that condition Uh, so uh, in, and in the in the case like uh, if the patients are already having a, a down syndrome baby or uh, there is a disorder present in the family they they always want to uh, get a reoccurrence risk and i think a professional uh, genetic counselor or a medical geneticist can help uh, in calculation of the reoccurrence uh, risk of uh, of of a disorder in in next pregnancy and uh, moreover i feel uh, like uh, uh, like the trisomies are easily detectable prenatally these days and with the help of genetic counseling um, such patients can get uh, get help uh, to 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 detect these disorder prenatally that is in in uh, pregnancy only and if patient uh, parents are willing they can go for medical termination of uh, pregnancy uh, if Uh, the screening test and then the diagnostic test show that there is a abnormality present in the fetus so so i i personally believe uh, in case of uh, family history of a genetic disorder or if a patient is a carrier of a robertsonian translocation or any other balanced translocation so pre test genetic counseling is must for uh, such patient that's one message which is taken correctly definitely genetic counseling is improving in india and uh in the future that is the way to go and in such congenital abnormalities if one gets as you correctly mentioned even in pregnancy uh there are a lot of tests prenatal tests that can actually be done to identify uh the occurrence yes. of any but but we we need a uh, particular targeted test uh we okay. cannot go uh, these are not generalized test or uh, is uh, these tests are costly and uh, should be uh, targeted to a particular disorder like we have uh, for trisomies we should go for biochemical testing we should go mm -hmm. for screening by biochemical testing then uh, they should be go for ntnb scan that is the level 1 scan for the fetus then they should go for nipt if required that is non invasive prenatal testing this is the best screening test available nowadays and if screening test is positive for any trisomy uh, so uh, so they can go for a diagnostic test to amniocentesis so these things are easily available and uh, right genetic counseling can help such patients uh, easily yes. nowadays in india definitely definitely uh, so lastly uh, dr sandu if you could just ex highlight your experience uh, in publishing with fertility science and research and how has this journal actually contributing or rather how is it contributing in your field of expertise uh, i must say uh, the overall experience were very positive uh, i really feel the, uh, the overall total process were, was very smooth from uh, starting from submission till publication uh, i got uh, reviews and um, uh, uh, advice from the editorial board and uh, from the peer reviews reviewers also so that those uh, uh, points helped me in improving my manuscript and uh, moreover i i personally uh, feel that uh, this journal is having a good uh, readership and uh, visibility and that will definitely uh, give our research or this um, case a uh, uh, good exposure 
and uh, and i am really hopeful that this uh, case report in uh, fsr will gives a few insights to the readers about the uh, robertsonian translocation down syndrome and infertility and uh, moreover uh, if uh, infertility is there and there are idiopathic reasons so genetic uh, aspect is very important in such cases so i personally believe uh, combining infertility research with genetics is the need of the hour uh, and uh, i believe uh, such interactions uh, and such publications will uh, help uh, this field in india great uh, thank you so much for joining us today at medical dialogues and it was lovely to be gaining all your valuable insights in the, with respect thank to this you, case thank you so much thank you so much for inviting me for this talk i'm really thankful to the fsr and uh, and uh, your uh, channel also thank you thank you so much dr nandita never miss a medical update from medical dialogues like subscribe and press the bell icon